everything changed, you know? I started playing when I was five with uh, the idea that it could be something serious in my life. It was forced upon me, and now, of course, I'm so grateful that it was. Growing up, it feels like anything is possible. And the moment that you become a mother, it stops feeling that way. All of a sudden, we become less even though in our own tiny little worlds we've become huge because we've become somebody's mother. I want so much to go back to what I was doing. This one, she's going like this. And this one, he's going like this. Oh. And this one, he's going like this. Oh. This one, he's going like this. Oh. I'm gonna do it again. All right. I would give my right arm to have like, you know, six months at home. This one, she's going like this. The mother's job is so much harder than the father's job. And the gender balance gets totally knocked on its ass. You think you're doing a good job with that stuff, and then you have a kid, and all of a sudden you realize that you're totally lame with that stuff. Look at that. Look at those In Ezra's first year, Godspeed started rehearsing full time, like a day job. Then it was reaching this point where I felt like the cliche, I was coming home from practices, like, you know, like, I need a drink, and, like, practically loosening my necktie, and then Jessica had been with us for the whole day, and... <laughs> we have to figure out something else other than me being on the road and you being at home, right? I don't want that. I can think of a couple of friends of mine, musicians who in the last few years have had kids and they don't do the music so much anymore. I think Ephraim and Jessica are showing that it's possible, but I don't know if, Does it if their example is enough to inspire the courage <laughs> for me to, I don't know how, personally, how, how I would fare in the same situation. Yeah. So as Ezra's godfather, you are to be his spiritual advisor. Is that one of the... Uh... I don't really know. What's, what's the job description of a godfather? I see it as, a, as just someone who's a protector and a, someone who's there for him. And I think we're lucky to be in a band where most of us are really, really close and we're really good friends.
most men don't share anything equally. You know, once money comes in, generally, most of the money goes to one or two people in the band. And that's a surefire way to earn a living in this business. You know, if you take more than your bandmates do, then you'll probably be okay. To me, that's dishonest. We're committed to the idea of wealth redistribution, you know? The rich shouldn't be so rich and the poor shouldn't be so poor. So why would we replicate any of that class system in our own band dynamic, right? We have to make a little money, but we live pretty simple lives. We're not extravagant. Success is being able to do what you love doing and not having to compromise. That I haven't had a job for the past 10 years is pretty much my success. The sides of the to keep the workflow going. Fuck, they're labeled for. Try some. You guys want to stack these in order? And why not just number them after they're folded? Up? We're like a neighborhood grocery store. We earn you know, basically a lower middle class living. Um, and I feel content with that, if, if it could last. If um, we don't finish, worst case scenario is we bring the box on the bus and at some point on the bus. And this idea that you could earn a wealthy living playing music is a recent innovation. For centuries, musicians were the lowest rung of the ladder, were like the degenerates, the people who like played for pennies in the town square. We identify with that tradition. Zion, I felt like Mount Zion was just sort of an orphaned band. We didn't feel much in common with anything contemporary, but at the same time, we weren't uh, playing old-timey music either. And playing with Vic sort of opened up this idea that, fuck no, you know, like we're working within a tradition. write music that's like harder than what we can actually play. We just end up making these impossible songs and then we sing them even though we can't sing very well. I constantly feel like my position as a musician in the world is tenuous. Like, I constantly feel like I'm going to turn a corner and it will be gone. Why is it that there are so few women in their mid-30s and beyond in bands? We're the veterans now. It's like, I know. Who's, it's like, we made, we made it. <laughs> it's the golden years now. Yeah. <laughs> or did we? I don't know. You yeah. know, it's... Right now, I'm just thinking, okay, what's going to go in Ezra's suitcase? What's going to keep him occupied when he's bugging everybody else? Just thinking about him constantly and his well-being and then how can I keep him feeling great so that everyone else can feel great. So I don't feel this guilt and responsibility of the fact of him. You know what I mean? 
no one would ever say this to me, but I do sometimes question, like, wouldn't it be easier for everybody if I just quit, you know? <laughs> I feel that within me. Like, I, I don't feel that from anybody else. I feel that within me. You can't even think about it. Like, you can't tour without your child. And our husbands would never be thinking about what to put in the arts and crafts package for the, <laughs> for the bus. <laughs> and I think that's like, that's, that's like the heart of the matter. It's like, as a mother, you can't escape that. Now the band isn't my first priority. I have this child. My family is my first priority. What if we break him? <laughs> I don't think we're gonna break him. We might break him. We might break him a little bit. We'll see what happens. I don't, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I think we both have the feeling, and everyone keeps reminding me of this, is that it would be so much easier not to do it. And, it, but if we don't do it, then, you know, we have to do it. Like, we just have to do it. We have to try. To get to the most places in the least amount of time, we're basically driving for a week straight. Not only drive at night, but we drive in the day too. Half the band just stays in bed, which I totally <laughs> understand. <laughs> The hours you keep when you're on the road are exactly the worst hours to raise a kid. When we have to drive is the time when he should not be cooped up in a van. When we have to go to work is when we should be with him, getting him ready to go to bed. I mean, it's all topsy-turvy. Okay. They're treating you well here. They're treating you okay. They're not ripping you off on drinks or, I don't know, searching you unnecessarily or anything. Does anyone else have a question? Does anyone else have a question? You fucking play music. What the fuck? <laughs> anyone else have a question? Last year I was gone nine months, you know? Like, just so much. Having Tim on the road makes it, it's like, oh, let's go on tour. Hey, what's it, what's you? 
And who knows, maybe I'll want to have kids someday and 